Hello, this is Levi Shore. Welcome back to Swing Good Torah. So a lot of people have pointed out that uh, this week's Parsha, Lech Lecha, it talks about Avraham's war. Um, it's often called Abraham. So Avraham's war has a lot of parallels to what's going on in Israel right now. I personally think, even though this war and this and the Parsha hints at the current war, that this uh, war in, in, the, in the Parsha of Lech Lecha refers to a much greater war that will happen in the time of Mashiach. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about Avraham's war, and then we'll talk about the current war in Israel right now. So what happened is Avraham, his nephew Lot, uh, was one of his main students. But after they came back from Egypt, um, at some point they, they started to separate because Lot now had um, incredible wealth that he acquired, and he went and separated from Avraham. So he kind of left the teachings of Avraham and he went to settle in uh, in the city of Sodom. Which, and at the time, around the Dead Sea, it was uh, one of the most fertile areas of the world. It was like a breadbasket for the world. And it was these five very rich uh, metropolises, these huge cities. And it's not like it is now. And um, so Lot had separated from him. But even so, this, this great world war broke out and this war started, I believe it started right outside of Damascus. And the war was between the five wicked kings in living in Israel. And that time it was called the land of Canaan. And these were, um, they were Canaani, they were Canaanite um, kings. And they lived in this very wealthy, rich metropolis. And, you know, it's like uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah. Not, not, known, for, not known for their morality. But uh, they had great wealth. And then they were at war. So those five evil kings were at war with another, uh, with another uh, four evil kings. But these, these other kings, they came from the nations that would eventually become the four great empires of world history. So those Amraphel, who was previously called Nimrod. And Nimrod was the first uh, great king of the world. And he ruled over all the world after the flood. But now he's kind of fallen from that position of dominance where there was only one king, where everyone was united building the Migdal uh, Bavel, the Tower of Babel, in modern-day Iraq. So he represented what will become the Babylonian Empire. And then there was a king representing um, what will become the Persian Empire, what will become the Greek Empire from the same nations, and then what will become the Roman Empire. So it was the five kings against the four kings. I believe it was the four kings that uh, kidnapped Lot, and then uh, Avraham got involved. With, he took his students. There's some debate if he just took his uh, servant Eliezer or if he took all his students. And he got in the middle of this war, not necessarily to fight for either side, but to, um, to rescue Lot. And then I think by him getting involved, I, I believe that the five kings uh, were rescued by Avraham and then they were maybe victorious in the war. But... Um, the war wasn't the war wasn't centered around um, Abraham, and he kind of got involved just to rescue Lot. But there, there's there's amazing parallels, and it definitely hints at the current conflict. Um, Abraham was born in 1948 of the Hebrew calendar, and we see very obvious parallel to the modern state of Israel, which was founded in 1948. And then when he was 75 in the year uh, 2023 of the Hebrew calendar, and here we are. 2020 year 2023 of the Roman exile and same thing and there's a war broke, breaking out and then we see Lot being taken as a hostage and uh, and we see the hostages in Gaza. So what's the current state of this war? So I believe the events of the, now I don't know where the current conflict is going to lead but if if the events are parallel then we're talking about a major world war that Israel will find itself in the middle of, but not necessarily like the whole war starting, you know, with an attack on Israel. So currently right now, it, it, it's absolutely madness. Um, I mean, it was Simcha's Torah, Shabbos of Simcha's Torah in Israel, which was October, uh, October the 7th. It's been weeks now. I think it's like three weeks or so. And uh, over 200 hostages still remain in Gaza. And... Uh, We'll talk about maybe a little bit what we can all do to, to add merit to, to freeing them. I think just learning some Torah together, we uh, start to build some merit to uh, for Hashem to help us uh, save the hostages. But 
we see a war right now where, in some sense, Israel is completely fighting almost entirely alone. Um, <clears throat> they were attacked originally by Hamas, and Hamas uh, perpetrated the, these horrible Nazi atrocities. Over, like, I think, 1,400 Jewish people were killed in Israel. Jewish people of you know nationalities from all over the world and, and were captured or killed. And Hamas still has over 200 hostages in Gaza. So we see right now that um, Israel has been <clears throat> basically um, attacking with airstrikes, mainly not, not the main inv invasion yet. And, and they've taken out a lot of structure in Gaza and some of the, uh, the commanders of uh, Hamas. But for the most part, Israel's fighting alone at the moment. Um, I, I believe they're they're being assisted and 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 helped with you know ammunition and arms from the Western powers, America, the front, and uh, probably uh, also um, you know from just the uh, the world leaders that have visited there, probably being assisted by uh, England and uh, and possibly some of the other Western powers. So they're they're being given weapons and assistance, also military advisors. And there may there may already have been some American um, special forces help. It's it's unclear. It's not really publicly reported yet. But it, but Israel right now is fighting alone. They're 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 fighting Hamas. They're preparing for the ground invasion into Gaza. They're they're trying to hold off Hezbollah in Lebanon terrorist group Hezbollah from invading with a massive army from the north. They're they're so they're doing strikes, artillery strikes, and some airstrikes against. Hezbollah positions that are attacking Israel from the north. A lot of, um, I mean, many, many people, I don't know the exact number, it's some huge number of, of Jewish people and Arab residents of the north have been evacuated. And then Israel's also fighting uh, right next door in Syria. So there's the Iranian Syrian forces that have also been, you know, shooting, you know, into Israel. Also drones from Lebanon and Syria. So Israel has done some airstrikes in Syria They've taken out some of their airports and some of their military positions. And then they are also fighting in Judea and Samaria, often called the West Bank, and fighting, um, you know, arresting some Hamas uh, fighters there, terrorists there. And then I think also somewhat maybe with, you know, even Fatah, PLO forces, who knows, but uh, there's some unrest there. So they're basically fighting on four fronts right now. Now, while America has uh, moved, um, they have one major battle uh, strike uh, in, the, in, in the Mediterranean. Um, they have one strike group there, and the other is either almost there or on the way. Or... And then America, I think, also has forces in, in the Red Sea. So America is also under attack, even though they have a strong military presence there. And it's very strange because the American forces are kind of being held back by the Biden administration right now. So Biden's done good things by, you know, at least giving, you know, verbal support to Israel. He, he's been probably giving them uh, military assistance and then a, a strong show of force to try to keep back Hezbollah and Iran from making this a much wider conflict. But yet the American forces themselves have been under attack you know, on the bases in Iraq, in Syria, um, their their ship, I, I think it was in the Red Sea, they intercepted twice now, or, or, or twice reported, I think there's many other incidents, but shooting down drones and missiles coming from the Yemeni, the Yemen uh, Houthis, also another I Iranian-backed group. So we have a strange situation right now. So we have the, the real conflict day-to-day, -day, Israel's basically doing the fighting. There, there could be covert American fighting at this point, but it's, it's just not reported yet. And then America is kind of being held back um, from really, from really, you know, taking out, you know, fighting back on, on, on the attacks on them. But uh, it's like the whole thing is a, uh, I mean, the whole thing is like, you know, like a explosive about to go off. And, and I think it's all waiting on Israel going into Gaza. Um, and once, once the the IDF, uh, in a major way, I think, goes into Gaza for the ground offensive, I think it's going to break around all the borders, and it could be, you know, America and Iran, and maybe we'll, 
I'll do, I've done some videos in the past about, uh, you know, what the Torah says about a war between Edom and Paras, which, which could be a war between America and Iran, where America will uh, be victorious and then be all-powerful, the major world power for nine months, and we can talk about that again in a future video. But right now, what, what we can do to help us non-combatants is just give merit. I mean, we need Hashem's help. I mean, for the Jewish people, this is, uh, they are badly outnumbered right now. And uh, we need we need a miraculous uh, rescue for all the hostages in Gaza. And just everything we can do, just any mitzvah we can do, I mean, saying the Shema Yisrael is a great mitzvah, very powerful. Just saying Tehillim, uh, lighting Shabbos candles, a fantastic mitzvah. Doing Kiddush on a cup of wine or grape juice, whatever you prefer. Just any of the 613 mitzvahs that people can do. Learning Torah, fantastic thing to be doing right now. And all this, and all this, we can lend a great amount of merit uh, to to really deserve Hashem's, like, uh, you know, a massive, like, military uh, victory. And, like, like we really need, like, a divine intervention at this point. But um, it's interesting. When we go back to Abraham's war, I mean, Abraham, Avinu, Abraham, our father, he... Uh, he was a man of chesed. He was a man of kindness. That He devoted his life to kindness. And he reached out to strangers, him and his wife, Sarah. And they would invite strangers into their tent. And they would give him these lavish banquets. And he would ask only one thing in return. He would ask that you make a simple bracha, a simple blessing, just to thank Hashem for the food. Just to thank the infinite creator. You know, to thank him for giving us all this, this great... Uh, you know, great the food and everything that, you know, we're given in life. And it's interesting that even though Abraham devoted his life to, to kindness and, and to reaching out, to reaching out to the world and teaching the world about Hashem and, and trying to fight against like the false ideologies of, of idol worship, of Odazarim, that there are times, there are times in life that even a man has devoted his life to kindness when his nephew was captured there's a time to fight. And this right now for Israel, this is a time to fight. And the evil has to be defeated. And it's, it's, a, it's a sad moment for the world right now where, in some sense, the world is terrorized. The world is terrorized by the, this Hamas, which we talked about in Parsha Noach, means violence and all kinds of forms of immorality. And, and they're just, everyone's terrorized after this act of vi violence and there hasn't been any retribution yet there hasn't been a true like redeeming you know rescuing the hostages and, and then just a just an elimination of this uh this horrible terrorist group okay so bizrat Hashem, we're gonna see better days partial we we get the great merit of avraham one of uh the greatest men in the history of the world his his descendants started the major world religions like his his children started Judaism. What's the, what's known as the religion of Judaism, Christianity, Islam, even Hinduism and Buddhism were all from his children. All the, all the major religions were started from his children. And I guess if we want to be technical, someone like a Karl Marx, the, the founders of, of the atheist religion, <laughs> uh, also his his descendants. And that's why he's called the Av Hamon, the, the father of many nations. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope we hear better news soon, and I uh, hope to see you back on Sweet Good Torah.